Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited, Airbus Perlin 2 team celebrates world record flight. Instructor support now available for EAA Young Eagles and Sporty's online course. And Marine Solnier Type L airplane replica comes to EAA Aviation Museum Collection. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom at September 7, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Airbus Perlin Mission 2 made history Sunday in the Patagonia region of Argentina by soaring to over 52,000 feet and setting a new world altitude record for glider flight. Chief pilot Jim Payne and co-pilot Morgan Sandercock completed this historic Perlin 2 flight from Comandante Armando Tola International Airport in El Calafate, Argentina, passing the previous 50,727-foot world record for glider altitude that was set in the unpressurized Perlin 1 by the Perlin Project founder Einar Inavoltsen and lead project sponsor Steve Fawcett in 2006. Airbus Perlin Mission 2 is an initiative to fly an engineless glider to the edge of space using weather phenomena called stratospheric mountain waves, rising air currents that are significantly heightened a few times a year in only a couple places on the Earth by the polar vortex. Following the completion of the mountain wave gliding season in Argentina, Airbus Perlin Mission 2 will return to Minden, Nevada, where the all-volunteer team will modify and enhance the Perlin 2 glider based on information acquired in this year's test flights. Ultimately, the Perlin project will attempt to reach 90,000 feet, a world altitude record for any wing-supported flight with or without an engine. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's Daytona Beach Campus has joined Sporty's Pilot Shop in helping EAA Young Eagles achieve their dreams of flying with Embry-Riddle Flight Instructor Support, now part of the Sporty's Online Learn to Fly course available to all Young Eagles. More than 45,000 young people have enrolled in the Sporties course since 2009, as it is free of charge to all kids who have taken a Young Eagles flight. The course guides students through all knowledge required to pass the ground school requirements for an FAA private pilot certificate. All Young Eagles who are enrolled and active in the Sporties Online Learn to Fly course will have a dedicated email address to contact Embry-Riddle flight instructors with questions. That team of flight instructors will continue to be available to Young Eagles enrollees as long as they remain active within the online course. Every Young Eagles receives online course access information upon completion of their flight. They can then activate that Sporties course free of charge. After the break, Moraine Sol Nie Type L airplane replica stays in Oshkosh. Progressive Aerodyne's Sea Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website, or a podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. In a donation honoring 100 years of the French-American aviation relationship, a full-size Moraine Solnier Type L parasol airplane replica will join the prestigious EAA Aviation Museum collection in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 
this handcrafted reproduction of the World War I era parasol, an ancestor of Daer's TBM, very first turboprop aircraft family, was brought by Daer to the U.S. for an appearance at last month's EAA Air Venture Oshkosh Flying. During the week-long event, the aeroplane was a major draw, attracting a steady flow of visitors. While the Type L originally was planned for return to France, it was dedicated to honor the EAA's request that the replica be permanently exhibited at the EAA Aviation Museum. It is to be situated near the facility's entrance between the historic reproductions of the Wright Brothers, Wright Flyer, and Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis. A flight-worthy replica retains the Type L parasol's original wooden structure configuration along with its wing warping system and the aircraft's all-flying rudder and stabulator controls. As a result of the donation, Die Air has offered to sponsor the construction of a second flight-worthy Type L replica, which will be produced and based in France. It's Thursday, which means it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. One of the main aspirations of all our Aero News, Airborne, and Aeroverse programming is the desire to rebuild the aviation community and get the entire aviation world to cooperate for the common good. As we go forward with the most aggressive and disruptive efforts in our history, that's one aim that will not change. A spirit of cooperation is essential if aviation is not only to survive, but to eventually prosper once again. So as we make changes and evolve our programming, we hope you'll alert us to opportunities to seek greater industry cooperation and urge those organizations and businesses you work with to seek the same. With an industry full of special interests, the occasional petty jealousy and fair amount of tunnel vision about the benefits of the industry-wide cooperation and in promises that all its efforts will be geared towards such goals and hope you'll urge everyone you fly with and work with to help us rebuild the aviation community and the spirit of cooperation that used to be such a large part of the Aeroverse. After these messages, Dream Chaser spacecraft has successful test. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. So much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Dream Chaser engineering test article passed a successful captive carry test at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center last week. These activities are being conducted through a Space Act agreement with NASA's Commercial Crew Program, although the Phase II flight tests will also be highly supportive of and executed in parallel with the continued work being done by the SNC under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services to contract. Pilots can now pump their own 100 LL fuel at Eastern Iowa Airport in Cedar Rapids, saving nearly $2 per gallon. Self-serve fuel has been one of the most requested improvements at the airport, according to Airport Director Marty Lentz. The fuel, which sells for nearly $6 per gallon from the airport's tanker trucks, will cost about $4.10 per gallon if the pilot pumps it him or herself. Rhett McNeil, a 26-year-old corporal from Griffin, Georgia, has developed a 3D-printed UAS nicknamed Scout that is a cheaper alternative to the hand-launch fixed-wing RQ-11 Raven and RQ-12 WAS-3 UAS that the Marines currently use. 
costing $35,000 to $49,000 per unit. The Raven and Wasp UAS are considered relatively inexpensive by military standards, but they are still expensive enough to where only a few Marines are authorized to fly them. The union that represents pilots flying for Horizon Air has filed a lawsuit against the carrier to assure that it does not reassign its Embraer E-175 airliners for which it has delayed delivery. Horizon says it does not have enough pilots to fly the new planes, so it has put off taking delivery of the new airliners for an undetermined period of time. That led Tinkster's Local 1224 concerned that the airplanes might be leased to rival regional airline SkyWest to file its lawsuit. Goody Hutchins, Member of Parliament for Long Range Mountains and Parliamentary Secretary for Small Business and Tourism, has announced the government's $997,880 Canadian dollar investment to purchase an aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicle and associated equipment at the Deer Lake Regional Airport. The funding comes through Transport Canada's Airport's Capital Assistance Program. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. On a flight from Honolulu to New York on Hawaiian Airlines last November, passenger James August engaged in behavior so disruptive that the pilot felt compelled to turn the plane around and return to Honolulu. August's behavior is not in dispute. He pleaded guilty in February to charges of interfering with a flight crew and was sentenced to three years probation by U.S. District Senior Judge Susan Oki Malloway. Now, Judge Malloway has ordered August to repay Hawaiian Airlines $97,817, the cost of returning the flight to Honolulu. On the flight, August, who lives in New Jersey, threatened his girlfriend and her children other passengers and crew members and even made contact with a flight attendant's shoulder with the back of his hand. The crew said his disruptive behavior started before the flight left the ground. The restitution to the airline includes Hawaiian's costs for fuel, maintenance, ground crew, replacement flight crew, re-catering, and landing fees. August also has to reimburse Hawaiian for what it paid to accommodate passengers on other airlines. He was not held accountable for 4,600 in mill vouchers the airline gave to the passengers. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We're still going to see you tomorrow.